It is the 25th of March 2023 and this is the future of photography. The future of photography. Hello and welcome back. I'm Chris, there's Adrian and Jeremiah and this is the future of photography. Hello. How are you doing, gentlemen? Hello. Uh, Hello. We're adding a new nation to our little team, the nation of Canada, I think, this week, are we? That's right. That's where Vancouver. I found myself. Yeah. Uh, Vancouver Island. Island. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I've, I've, you know, I wanted at one point, a few years ago, I had a plan to hold a workshop there. And for some reason, it never panned out. So I never made my way to Vancouver or Vancouver Island. So it's beautiful. Yeah, it's, I, I, it's I hear I hear for... that, yes, but still, yeah. they never managed to, to get there, so well, still on Come on by. Come on by. Do you, have a, do you have a job on set for me, like sweeping the, sweeping the studio? <laughs> that Just kind entertaining of stuff. the crew would be fine. <laughs> um, so, Adrian, you made a suggestion for today's episode, and it's very current news. It is. It's a news, yes, uh, item. Um, I'm, I'm not entirely sure what uh, the future of photography angle is going to be on this, but uh, it's it's uh, it's one of those ones where you know, we could we could have one of those clickbaity titles, you know, sort of three photographers react to. Uh, you know, uh, well, we, maybe the future of photography communication or education or well maybe actually that's a really good point um uh and uh, so so what we're talking about here is the decision by the parent company of dpreview.com uh to, to kill off the whole site uh in Who about are they, three by weeks the way, time do we know uh amazon. Well, the, the parent yeah, the parent company is amazon and just just i mean People who don't know who DP Review is, uh, they must have lived under a rock for the entire history of digital photography. <laughs> or never much. bought a camera. But but other. DP Review, or or as I've heard some people uh, initially refer to them, Deep Review, but that's not what they do. Is that not what they're um, called? Oh, okay. DP Review, Digital Photography Review, the website with forums and tests, and um, later on they start a YouTube channel, and they pretty much, yeah. Di- they, they pretty much uh, accompanied the entire history of digital photography that we know. And yeah, they go way back, right? If you're, if you're into the whole digicam scene at the moment or older digital cameras and you want to figure out what those cameras do, this is the website you go to to look up the yes. specs and stuff like that. You can, oh, a camera that was released in 2008, you say, I'll go to dpreview.com and see what they said about it at the time. <laughs> And I remember when I was new to digital photography, um, as many new photographers in that realm are very, um, let's say, tech-focused, that's um, DP Review, really catered to that with their forums and discussions about pixel peeping and detailed sharpness. And like that, 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 that was pretty much an important part of, uh, of DP Review. And now they are on the way out. Yeah, at short notice. Um, so, uh, at least short notice to me, anyway. Um, I became aware of this only very recently, uh, as it started. The news started going viral on photography bits of the internet, and and things started happening. Uh, and yeah, you know, there, there's a lot of upset. Uh, there's a lot. Of, yeah, yeah, a lot of people who are who who are saying you can't possibly do this. This is a very important resource for us all and stuff like that. So it's like an old. I, friend, I suggest uh, that maybe maybe it has to do with the amount of reviews within the purchasing side of Amazon. So if you're going, uh, I don't know. So 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 the the thing is when Amazon bought them, which by the way I I kind of remember, but it was mm. never a really important thing that Amazon owned them because they, they pretty much kept their hands off to the point where I, yeah, the, I, I, I could have seen so much more synergies between the, um, well, be, between the, the two sites in terms of uh, reviews and linking back and forth. And, uh, um, but that, that never really seemed to have happened apart from like some affiliate links and things. So, um, theory, Amazon though. kept their hands yes, off. I, that's what I'm trying to say. You know, I have a theory, and it, it, you know, it comes to like this week. The uh, very well-known film critic A.O. Scott for the New York Times um, has uh, resigned, or, or is about to resign, um, from reviewing movies. And uh, this is a very well-respected uh, film reviewer 
who basically came of age reviewing in the 90s, um, though he was very influenced when he was young in Paris and watching old American movies evolve in the darkened room experience and coming out into the world with that that feeling of having seen something magical and ha feeling that he's really lost that. And the other thing is he always felt that the responsibility of a critic, and, and I, that's where, this is where the synergies are in terms of moving on in terms of the historical, is, is that he, he always felt his job was to connect the film with an audience that may not have been aware of it, to, to make them want to see something different. And... Um, and now with the, you know, the, the overwhelming amount of social um, that we experience, the medium, whether it's YouTube, you know, Insta, uh, you know, TikTok, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera, there's so much opinion about all media that uh, his becomes a very small, lonely voice. Um, in a newspaper that probably for movie lovers is probably less read than ever. And so, uh, you know, a DP review may be suffering from, I mean, unless it's just a purely financial issue, but I think Amazon can <laughs> gag that down. But um, my instinct is maybe that the, the, multiple voices, the many, many videos, and we are one um, on YouTube, that that really make a, a more accurate, say, scientific, objective, really kind of classical review site with all of the pixel peeping that we're going to talk about is no longer important to people. And so it's, it's just that. Um, I mean, do we, you know, at a certain point, do we care about 8K versus 6K? I mean, really? I mean, we, we have to admit that a lot of the, the sales of any gadgetry is, most of that is not actually by the specs, but by the brand and by the, by what it makes, what it makes people feel. And not the actual numbers, yeah. and then and and then of course you go to the numbers and justify your purchase that way. But um, I think the the start is a, is an emotional connection, and that you go, oh yeah, I need to have that, and then you look for the number yeah. and say, yeah, by it the way, I me. bought it because. And I'm sure it is with you, right? It's and, like oh, I gotta have that camera. I don't care. And with cameras, care. that's exactly <laughs> the way it is. So you might be right. And yes, yes, as you say, the the times are changing, and the quality is changing, and we're now at a point with a lot of the gear the my phone shoots 4k the next one will probably <laughs> shoot 8k and uh, sure. and hdr and whatever that that th those differences might not be that important to people anymore yeah is there, a, is there perhaps an element is there is there perhaps an element of there there's simply just not so many cameras being released anymore Oh, certainly that is a that is probably a part of that as well. We're looking at a, a pretty steep drop in DSLRs and well, DSLRs anyway, but uh, mirrorless cameras even because of these little squares in our pocket. Well, and because of sufficiency as well, right? So you know, pick yeah. up any modern camera, uh, and I, and I say modern, I don't mean like a twenty twenty three camera. I mean any camera from you know, from about twenty. 17 onwards or whatever you know and you could pick a date i suppose any time back from there um yeah and you could say actually this is sufficient right you know, i'm going to have a camera that can yeah. take a nice photograph that you know the the with sharp lenses available for it and uh, and does it matter anymore sure i mean this year for example in kind of packing up my gear for this particular um trip you know, I had to think, well, what am I going to bring this year? You know, I, I don't think I'm going to bring as many cameras. I don't think I'm going to shoot as much. <clears throat> I have other ways of making images. Um, <laughs> I won't talk about that. Um, the, the, um, but I, I wanted just to bring, a, you know, a small kind of pocket size, nice zoom with, you know, 24-ish megapixels. And I have a beautiful Lumix I've traveled extensively with. It's a stunning camera. It's really great. But I wanted to know, is there anything new? So I went um, and just did a general, you know, is it the new Sony? Is it the new Nikon, Canon? And they're all 
I basically went to then B, B and H just to compare prices. And their reviews are very, very, very pretty much in depth. And they have a lot of, I mean, not as much as DP review, but they, there's a lot of specs and whatnot and opinions and all of the rest. Of course, the camera that I bought maybe two, three, four years ago is just as good as anything that's out there now. And no point in upgrading. So normally, I mean, years ago, I would have, First stop, DP review, would have really, you know, run all the specs and compared. But now the, the quality of the imagery is so good. Uh, and is it even better than my iPhone? I've never really done a comparison. But I think I think you've hit the nail on the head. You there know, are comparisons out iPhone, there. There are comparisons uh, out there. And uh, under, under favorable lighting conditions, uh, it's hard to distinguish very often. It is. Yeah. Especially presenting them on a screen, yes, you know, especially where the screen obviously covers a lot of, you know, problems that may occur when one is printing or blowing it up, certainly noise reduction, all of that stuff. I think that that's it. I think if you want to kind of explore some of the, you know, <laughs> I'm going to have a call back to last week. But I think, you know, I sent this article to Chris this week about the Samsung, again, another Samsung in-camera AI adjustment, probably putting in teeth. Uh, in dirty in babies. Teeth. <laughs> you know, baby, a baby shot, right? It doesn't have any teeth. And then like a photograph, it has teeth. Like, oh, my God, it's making decisions about your well you know, you know if you look at gpt chat gpt that thing is making things up too so why not a camera making up things that it sees so yeah is it telling you that it's going to do that or is it just doing that uh, surely there's surely there's a setting for that i, mean, I don't really i don't think i've ever had a, a setting. samsung phone there is a setting oh, okay. and it's called it's called smart enhance or something and and i think it's right I'm not even sure it's on my default, but it's it's something that the the it, the the camera with its built-in AI can hallucinate things. Yes, <laughs> sure, and yeah. and sometimes that is helpful. I mean, the the, the example I saw for a, for an AI-based upresing tool years ago was like a bird uh, that was shot on a, on a sp on a stamp size photo and uh, trying to blow that up means you have to invent feathers but but it rec recognizes there are feathers and of course it puts feathers there that look believable and with a baby's gums then <laughs> that could be teeth <laughs> so why not <laughs> Now, um, by the way, just as an odd segue, remember, I, uh, this is kind of uh, earlier you, when do I Do you joined, realize we're uh, talking AI again here? Yeah. <laughs> do, but do, do, we're talking cameras, <laughs> the application of AI inside of camera processing. That's okay, different okay, okay. because exposure modification is AI as well. So, um, But do you remember a few years ago, we did an a episode uh, about what would you love in a camera? This is well yes. before AI hit the, you know, they were still researching it. It hadn't been at all in the vernacular of our kind of culture. And uh, one of the things that I said, holy shit, right, was like, yeah, I want a camera. And if I tell it to make an adjustment, it'll actually change the reality. Like, I remember saying that's where that, we are now. Something yeah. like that. And that's exactly where we are. I'd like to have control of it, but. I'm also willing to give it up with a certain so, setting. <laughs> it, it's, it's interesting, though, that those are the things that, you know, if that's what cameras are doing now, then you can understand the impacts on something like DP review, right? Because I do. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, they have clearly, clearly a, a, as a, a, a publication, a resource, a team, they, they, they've modified the way they, you know, they make these reviews over the years as that's become a relevant thing to do. But if the if all if ostensibly all your dedicated cameras are basically as capable as each other right now, you know, digital photography hardware has matured, right? Um, and you know that that's a yeah. So there's less less to say, which in turn means that people buy fewer of these things, which in turn means that there's fewer camera. Uh, it releases so there's less to say less to talk about you know there's you know you can you know and, and then if the news is that you know, you know the na latest camera puts teeth on a baby right that's that's not really dp review kind of news is it 
No. <laughs> Not really. Yeah. Not really. I mean, our, our iPhones are fully capable of doing that. I took a walk yesterday to explore the the kind of coastline near where I live, and <clears throat> the light was going down. I, I took a, a, a picture of the bay. The clouds were kind of roiling, and I just, <laughs> because this is me, <laughs> I just hit uh, paint by Turner. <laughs> right? <laughs> And it took my photograph. It didn't take it. It didn't turn it into a painting, but it used the Turner color vernacular to basically create something really amazing. And it took literally I was still walking. Uh, you know what I mean? I didn't have to stop and process. It, it just happened like that. Yeah. And, and, you know, there was maybe one more step that I did, but very soon... I think our reviews will be less about camera and more about software. And, oh, and that kind and, of software will be. And I, I see this with uh, with our Happy Shooting podcast here in Germany, which um, for eight, eight years we had a sponsor who we would uh, have a sponsor segment every episode where we would test a gadget. They sent us a box of gadgets every month and then we'd test them on the show and talk about them. And... Um, a couple of years ago, they had to cut back because we are they're, 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 the whole landscape changes. People don't buy that many accessories anymore for their cameras because they don't need them anymore. So, uh, sure. yeah. So, speaking of DP review, um, it's not quite gone yet, though, because the the thing that came out shortly after was that Petapixel takes over. So Chris, oh, good. Good Chris uh, Nichols and Jordan Drake, the two guys behind Petapixel, the face of <clears throat> Petapixel, um, who have also established uh, their uh, YouTube channel with all the tests and so on, um, they're now working for Petapixel and um, continuing what they done before, including the Petapixel YouTube channel. That's theirs now. So um, familiar faces. Um, they will continue their legacy there. So, um, and then of course the 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 last thing is, what's going to happen to all the information? It's it's a treasure. It's a history to, archive. It's a it's, it's a yes. historic archive that the that Petapixel uh, that DP uh, created over the last decades, right? Before you you mentioned that Petapixel would take over, my you know one of my queries were was that. The archive of it is absolutely a, a jewel of research and, l like you were saying, Adrian. It, the entire know, digital I, camera I, I, I history I want to buy an old there. camera. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So, you know, how does my, you know, the, yeah. How does my news. old Fuji work? Yeah. Good news there. Very good news. Internet yes. archive. And how does that relate involved. to the future, though? Yeah. Internet archive. Uh, archive.org. They are... At the yeah. moment, backing up the archive, uh, making sure that stays accessible for, That's well, really for good as news. long as they are around. That's really good news, because as much as I love Chris Nichols and Jordan Drake, and they do make some funny videos, uh, yeah, I'm less fussed about the technical side of their videos, but they are entertaining to watch. And if yeah. they've moved to Petapixel, that keeps them going, so that's cool. But it's the data that is important, as Jeremiah says. It's that resource. So if the Internet Archive is taking a backup of that, um, there and, and can continue to make that available to people. I think, I think that's a really good thing. I mean, yeah, the, the, there's huge amounts of depth. I have to say, actually, before I heard this news, I can't remember the last time I actually went to DP Review, which is a sad thing to say, but maybe it's an ind indicative of something. Um, it, because, you know, the world has moved on a bit, I guess, for, at least for me. Uh, now, but the, of course, the, the next question is who owns Petapixel? And might they sell <laughs> Petapixel later? I, I don't know who owns Petapixel, actually. I think they own themselves. I believe they own themselves. Do they? Okay. So if they're, if they're independent, and um, they're, then, yeah, maybe maybe they've got some, some hope. <laughs> so, so, certainly, DP Review being killed off is, is going to give their content potentially a boost, isn't it? So... Yeah, it's, yes. they're going to have a, a bigger market share of stuff although they you know different stuff i guess i mean i uh i don't know the whole depth of petapixel but my perception of them is they're primarily a news outlet you know around photography rather than uh something that is more review based but 
So where do we think this is heading in terms of the future of photography and the future of photographic information based on both hardware and software and uh, obviously printing and display and publication, um, all of that. How, how do we see the integration of all of that as a clear review rather than pitching? You know, so one always has to kind of take a lot of these sites with a grain of salt. Are they selling it, overlooking well, some of the flaws or not? Well, the, the, I mean, for me, this is a chance where we get to ask our question, what does this mean for the future of photography, right? And it's a chance to speculate wildly without fear of repercussions. So <laughs> you know, the... Uh, I feel safe I, now. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is a psycho yeah, psychologically safe zone. We can say whatever we like. Nobody's listening. Honest. Um, and the <laughs> uh, uh, and for me, uh, you know, the, the, it would be lovely, wouldn't it, if people stopped talking about technical stuff and started talking about art or right and about craft. Yeah. And you know, so, this is exactly what I've been wishing for since the beginning of, <laughs> since the early days of my digital photography, where I spent a lot of time on DP review, where I, where I often was the one in the forums, not alone, but with others together saying, why don't you just go out and take pictures? <laughs> <laughs> so that's this is this is this is a bit of a we are here moment. So well, where do we, we go from here? Maybe maybe we are. I mean, yeah. So yes. well, Jeremiah's given us some ideas. I mean, do we start talking right. about what you do with the cameras instead of what the cameras are technically uh, about? Yes. Yeah, is it? Is, do we start talking about different steps in the workflow uh, rather than yeah you know, just the cameras? Uh, you know, so uh, I mean, there there are of course plenty of. Uh, websites and, and forums and communities out there that talk about software and that talk about yeah other things um, but but perhaps perhaps the heyday of the spec of the digital camera is is behind us and, and I for one would welcome that right so yeah, I, well, you know, I, I, I I so I, agree half the time I, I can't so even agree. tell you how many pixels my camera has yeah you know, wouldn't like, okay. it, wouldn't it be nice to have a site where the query was not about the hardware but about the intention of the photographer so I need a camera to walk around with that does the following things. <laughs> Chris is making a chat GPT query right now. Um, uh, I, I, I was thinking about it. I was, I was thinking about I could, it because I could feel it across the water that you because were. Because you don't um, need you don't need that the ask a, a web page uh, in the future because you'll ask the box the the input box ah, on your laptop your ai you know? friend well see see that that's what i'm getting at in, in other words i want a i want a camera that enables me to slow down and observe the landscape and whatnot or i want something that fits in a breast pocket or i want something that is shock proof something underwater whatever it is and then get the hardware software combination that will lead you into a a purchase of of the camera that you need rather than I want something of 48 megapixels that does HDR with a zoom lens. So the intention of making the image now, and I think I'll go related back to, uh, you know, sort of AI queries where the query could process, assuming that the models are not <laughs> designed by Canon. Um, <laughs> but, but, well, or, or it, it, yeah. but 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 what I'm what I'm getting at is is I think in the future our reviews may be more about intention rather than pixel peeping. Discuss. That would be that would be nice. That would be nice. I, I think I I I lean more towards that sort of stuff. So so it you know if I think about. I, I, and I don't watch too much YouTube stuff about photography, but I do watch some, mostly for the entertainment value. And it's the it's it's the people going out and using stuff and having photography adventures that I find interesting and entertaining. It, you know, um, sure. it's less about oh, here's a review of a new lens or something and, and and things like that. But but there's room for everybody, right? I'm not. It's it's uh, you know, I might have a hope that yeah, it, it gets that way, but that's just my view, right? The, clearly, there has been for yeah, you know, since the, since the start of all of this there has been a market for for that kind of conversation right that sort of technical geekery and you know yeah we all we all love a bit of geekery don't we <laughs> sure 
Sure. Yeah. I, I I would love I would love a little pocket camera that just by clicking a button it transforms itself into a drone, and that drone will fly no higher, say, than ten feet. So there's no kind of height fly information that needs to be fi filed, etc. That has, um, you know, lidar or you know, radar, whatever it is to prevent it slamming into people that could just kind of move around and, and come to me. And then it comes back to me. I push it and it's a little pocket camera. That would be a great little thing to have, I think, for either video. So, so you're, you're looking for, for a little camera with a built-in long selfie stick pretty much. <laughs> but I don't want to carry it. <laughs> I just want to send it on its way. I want to go... <sighs> Go around the, the latest tree, come back to me facing out. That's it. Track of course, pool, one of course, with all the visual changes that are happening right now, all the changes in the visual field, and that brings us at least a little bit uh, to the AI realm, is um, we have to ask first what kind of photography will be left to do for us humans in, mm. let's say, five to ten years. And then your intention that you tell this thing I have an intent, I want to do this and that, and what camera do I need? Um, the answer might as well be, why would you need a camera for that? <laughs> the fun. The fun part. I don't have any problems with any of this at all. Yeah, th this is, is, this part is, of, not... is part of photography going the way of the horse? Like, um, what would you need a horse for? We have cars now. Um, I don't believe uh, so, that. So, well, me, well, me uh, Mr. A, Mr. AI. No, I, I completely <laughs> reject that because <laughs> there's nothing more fun than taking several pictures and then blending them <laughs> in AI. Okay, okay, okay. I think oh. it's intent. So, so if you, it, all you have to do, this, and it, this doesn't need to be a difficult argument for me, right? All you have to do is you have to consider a definition of composition as a reductive act to decide what you take out of the image and what you leave in. Oh, right? there you go. That's all. That's all very Excellent much. Excellent point. It, that's yes. all very much in the eye of the beholder. Uh, and you play with you play with the reductive process for composition. You can play with perspective and positioning and, and all of that sort of stuff. And all of that is about your creative intent. The tools will change over time. Uh, but the, I, I think the creative intent is, is, for me, the thing that will will persevere. Right. Um, we're already using tools that are vastly different to when we started out with photography. We're still making photographs with them. Right. So. Yeah. Why would it? Why would it, we stop? Why would, you know, if we enjoy it, sure. people enjoy it. Why would we stop? I like this. I like this. Uh, this avenue of thinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I. I don't think that. First of all, the the act of taking pictures uh, is something that I never stop doing. I mean, I love doing it. It's a very different experience connecting you with the subject, whether it's people, landscape, your kids, memory, whatever. That's a very, very connective process, an exciting one. I mean, it used to be that we had to wait a few weeks and get our pictures, you know, from the drugstore, from the lab, whatever you do, uh, watching a print emerge from the dark room. You know, th that was a very exciting process and, and continues to be. There is also the craft of photography. And one of my, my pick this week will kind of illustrate that. But the craft of slowing down and making something that out of photography that is somewhere closer to classic printmaking or, or, or painting, if you will. Whereas creating images in AI is a very different, especially if you're using a combination of ChatGPT and, and uh, Midjourney 5. This, these are unbelievably spectacular combinations which require training and all the rest of it. But that's more akin to illustration, painting, and, and an, uh, something out of one's imagination. So you're presenting your imagination onto your work, whereas photography, you're reacting to what you're seeing. So the, the, the environment, the kid, the memory, whatever, is, is pressing its uh, intention on you to react to and take the image. So it's, it's almost the opposite. Uh, it, it lives in the same world, but... Uh, and often the images can be similar, but the process, which is really where the magic is, uh, is very, very different. And I, I, for one, love the process of taking a picture, making a picture, 
uh, as well, whether it's with software or hardware, whether it's with a camera or with a computer, it is just part of the kind of ongoing evolution or discovery of, you know, the nature of reality or dreams, you know. So. And, and the more the robots take over, the more we as human beings want to be making things with our own hands. Yeah, that, imagine that. That imagine. will be much more important. Imagine if we lived in a post-scarcity society, right, where all of our needs were taken care of, when we could, be, we would be free then to to play, wouldn't we? And and creativity is part of play. And Which, you know, I'm not sure if it's still the case, but there was a time. Uh, it may still be the case that the actually the best-selling line of dedicated cameras in the world is the Fuji Instax cameras. Oh yeah. They yes. sell more units than anything else, right? And yeah, so what I I I'm. I, I quite like the idea that, you know, digital technology will make our life get easier. And Jeremiah, you said it yourself, you like all sorts of kinds of image creation. And you also said a few minutes before yeah. that, I went out for a walk, right? Because that's part of life as well. Going out for a walk that's is right. part of life and seeing things and capturing those things that you see in, you, because they inspire yeah. you creatively or because you want a record of them or, or for whatever reason is all part of it. So, yeah, I'm... Uh, sure. I'm, and, I'm feeling positive the about reinterpret the future. Sometimes the reinterpretation of the experience of going for a walk is is exciting in a different way. And so, uh, I, I just like you know, editing a photo is is a reinterpretation of the experience of seeing it. When you see it, are you imagining what it will eventually be, or just reacting to the moment that it is? It, obviously, if you're a war photographer, it'd be different. And if you're a landscape photographer, that would be a different thing. But it's all part of that realm. It's all part of the same experience, you know. Or are we moving to, uh, you know, in the immortal words of Kraftwerk, <laughs> we are the robots, <laughs> <laughs> right? We just, kind uh, of visionary, that, right? <laughs> <laughs> most certainly, uh, the, you know, the the. Um, the realm of, I don't know if, if you guys ever got a chance to see that old television show, Battlestar Galactica. The, which, uh, yes. the original one or the, the remake? The, no, the, no, the better one, the remake of it. Where, the remake, you know, the yeah, theme I watched of that, the, yeah. The, th yeah. the theme of the show is that, you know, as AI, as these Cylons, these robots became more sentient, they realized, of course, that the big problem with uh, with the universe, with certainly the world, was humans were mucking it up. And they mm -hmm. basically said, we've got to get rid of them because we are closer to God. Is, is, because they were programmed by man and their interpretation of man was created by God. So they were just another jump into the spiritual. And that was the theme of the whole show. Oh, well. I and so I say that I say that because there is an integration as we proceed into the future and our especially now we have to react you know people say talk about AI as being separate from people but people made AI Oh we you know, and, and, and we have we have been augmented for so long now I mean it it goes beyond just a pair of glasses we now are pretty much yeah. inseparably connected to our rectangles and other things so yes yeah so, you know where where is that where is the kind of separation there is no separation it's like you know the argument of like yeah we you know all of the urban landscape is nature because it all was made by nature and all is carbon and i mean that's you know i don't i mean i like it but you know i can understand <laughs> the philosophical argument but in terms of where photography is going, whatever photography is, um, it is really very much an emotional thing. It's, it, it's not a, I mean, it can be a technical thing, but even a scientist taking a picture of a, a cell in an electron mi microscope is very excited to see it for the first time. So even a science-based image or web, web telescope image or a picture of your child or your dog, these create this connection to whether it's a dream or reality, probably synthesized, that makes us feel more human. 
So that's a one... very nice. That's a very nice closing word for this segment. <laughs> yeah. By the way, we're still talking DP <laughs> review being dead and living on. So. Yeah, no idea how we got there from DP review closing yeah, down, but I, but but. but <laughs> <laughs> I guess the future of photography is bright, right? So, uh, yes, yeah, I would and, think so. Uh, uh, and as long as, you know, if we get to keep the resource uh, available to us so that we can, you know, over time it'll become a yeah. historical resource of, of, of stuff, uh, then that would be brilliant. All right. Yeah, because uh, just, just to put a per parenthetical on DP Review, the archive itself is interesting and will become more interesting as we circle back to some of the old hardware to re-explore what it meant to take pictures. I mean, you're doing that, Adrian, with your purchases of these older cameras. Yeah, and, absolutely. You know, working with them and, and, and going, oh, I wonder what that, you know, Casio 300, <laughs> you know, K... Uh, image would look like now with my aesthetic and, and going into DP review and, and really get a deeper understanding of something you may buy on, on eBay. That's very exciting. And, and it would be a shame to lose it. And I'm glad we're not. Future photography archaeologists will use it as a reference. <laughs> for sure. Yes. All right. The picks of the week. Adrian, let's start with you. You have a book. I have a book. book. I have a book uh, mm -hmm. which was recommended me, to me by a friend of mine. Uh, uh, it is, and it's uh, about graphic design. It's a it's a slightly retro book these days because uh, it's it's a book called The End of Print. Uh, it's by uh, Lewis Blackwell uh, and David Carson. David Carson being uh, for for those who, who know of him, which I didn't until very recently, uh, a very influential graphic designer in the nineteen nineties. Uh, and so uh, the link here is that uh, a friend of mine who saw my new website said, uh, oh, that's a very 90s influence you've got there in your imagery. Uh, you should go and get this book. So I found a copy of it uh, and uh, it's arrived now and I'm sort of picking my way through it. And it's got loads of great stuff in it and, and uh, lots of um, good 90s graphic design. It's well worth a read if you find a copy of it. Wonderful. The End of Print, the graphic design of David Carson. Um, I have two things. First of all, it goes, it goes right with what you just said, a story of, about graphic design. I've only brought a story today, and that is a challenge <laughs> that I recently came across, because I'm working for a client right now who years ago asked me to help them kick off a podcast and I helped them with the whole tech and, and logistics around that, and I designed the logo. And two years later, they came back to me and said, we want to uh, also have a letterhead, like old-fashioned paper letterhead. So based on that logo, because we're starting a, its own little brand slash company there, so they, they, I, I did that for them. And then they said, and we, by the way, we also have a brick-and-mortar location, so we need a sign for the... Uh, for, for the store, for the place. And there's a sign outside of their first business and they need one on the inside of the house for that new business. And um, and I, I should base it on that outside design that's already there in existence. So I asked them, can you ask the graphic designer who did that to send me the files to give me the... Illustrator files or whatever they used. I need to know what font it is and so on. And so, turns out, no, he's not alive anymore. So he took that information, literally took that to his grave. Huh. And um, so I went on a little detective, uh, <laughs> a detective journey to find out. Well, the, the finding out of a, about a font is easy today. You have websites like What the Font. And they, it gives you some suggestions. And with, uh, yeah, it, w it was a five minute job to find out the font. They just sent me some mobile phone snaps of that original <laughs> one. This, okay. The, bit, the bit, bit of a bigger challenge is, and this is a whole graphic design, color management related one, is figuring out the right colors. Because how do you figure out the color from a mobile phone snap? That might have been taken in the morning, at noon, in the evening. How old is the sign? It might have faded in the sunlight. <laughs> 
so so uh, I, I've I've tried to do some problem solving here, and I I finally get to the point where let me oh it's where I have sent them a good old gray card. Ah. So oh. what I'm what I'm getting from them now, and this is too far away for me to go, to go there. So so uh, what I'm getting from them now is uh, a few mobile phone shots. But with the gray card next to the sign, so I can determine to a certain degree of precision what color that is. And then the fact that this second sign will never be right next to the first sign, but inside the house in a different light, under different light, will take care of the rest. So um, that gave me, that, that took me a while to figure out. But um, this <laughs> is problem solving in color management and photography. And that was my little story. And the second thing I brought is um, pretty much along the lines of this whole people want to make things. People want to keep taking photos and the good old the good old days of film photography. <laughs> I just wanted to use this, uh, this place to plug two workshops that we're doing here in summer here in Hanover. Hmm, I'm hearing things. Two photography workshops, one about <laughs> film photography, an entry level, and the second one in August is about large format photography. For all the German speakers out there, that might be interesting. And the website is discoverthetopfloor.com, linked in the show notes. What was that sound? Uh, a ferry landing on the ah. docks or approaching. I, this, is, all right. this is all new information for new, me. New sounds. <laughs> Yeah, it makes a change from the, just, the usual police sirens you get at home, Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a welcome change from Venice. <laughs> All right, Jeremiah, have you brought us a pick of the week? I have indeed. Uh, it should be on the notes. Um, and it I'm not really seeing it. A, well, here it is. I'm not seeing anything it's here. It's about gravure. Here, here it is. Uh, DP Review is dead. Picks of the week. Um, it is, let me just see if I can, can I share a screen here? I don't know if I can. No, don't, I think don't. So. Um, but it is, I'll, I'll give you the, the website. You could type it in, edit this out. Sure. <laughs> uh, it's www.cone, C-O-N-E, dash yep. editions, dot com, slash gravure. Here we go. It's loading. It's, funny, it's, in the it's thinking about it. Yeah. There we go. There you go. Intaglio Photogravure. Now, um, John Cohn, who you know I've spoken about before, uh, he basically creates the inks uh, on piezo and is a absolutely brilliant and wonderful human. Um, we did an experiment maybe uh, during COVID, so it was a few years ago, uh, where he made a, a gravure of one of my... Um, kind of lunar landscapes that I created in Unreal Engine, and it is one of the most beautiful things that I've ever ever done. Um, these are very, very labor-intensive, very beautiful, but absolutely stunning way um, to achieve a the feeling, the emotional feeling between what is a photograph printed on gravure paper with very dense inks and the its continuous tone, which he's really mastered. Intaglio used to be, you know, dots that held the the inks, but he's just, he's he's figured out a way of making plates that are continuous tone. And um, um, first of all, cone editions is something that people should explore. Um, and if you ever wanted to have an amazing workshop in Platinum or in Taglio or um, Piezo, uh, he's in Vermont uh, in the countryside and a spectacular teacher, scientist, experimental. It, it's um, worth just going to the ones. website and, and watching him do his process because there's this video on the front that gives you some some idea of what's actually happening, which... Uh, in, in in itself is a is a looks like a very satisfying process. The printing. Yeah, these the, the, these prints take weeks to do because you the the kind of off on of, of making the plate is something, and then and then the print has to be printed um, right uh, damp, 
and uh, it's it's a it's a deal, but it's stunning. Uh, it looks like looks like something that I I want to get my hands on at one time. Vermont yeah. is a bit far away, but yeah, we'll <laughs> figure something out. Maybe there's someone. So is Antarctica, dude. <laughs> that is true. That is very true. <laughs> All right. Well, we do have an episode. Uh, and 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 a very wide a very wide range in this episode from a website going away to the future of foghorn included well you know the further we get away from a point in time and a point you know then you know the quantum waves uh, they 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 spread out don't they so who knows where our podcasts are going to take us when you start off with like one thing in a podcast idea and a podcast show note rather than a structured podcast you could go anywhere as we've just proven you could (laughs) all right so everyone go to our show notes there are links to everything that we talked about um, including the picks of the week Um, we'll be back soon with more until then everyone take care and have a good one have a good one bye bye (laughs) you've been listening to the future of photography Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Hold up. 